In lesson 7.3, you will use functions involving e. e is an irrational number like pi. It can be approximated to 2.7. It's known as the natural base, the Euler number, or the banker's constant. First thing we're going to do is simplify expressions involving that natural base e. All we need to do to simplify these expressions is use our properties of exponents. So we would divide. 24 divided by 8 is 3. And when we divide like bases, e, all we have to do is subtract exponents. So it's going to be e to the 8 minus 5 power, or e to the 3rd power. So that fraction simplifies to 3 e to the 3rd power. Okay, in our second problem, here, we're going to get rid of that negative exponent first. We're going to move that base 2e to the negative 5x power to the denominator of a fraction, and we'll make that exponent positive 2. Okay, then we want to get rid of the parentheses in the denominator. When we raise a product to a power, we raise every factor inside that product to that power outside. So 2 is going to be squared, and e to the negative 5x power is raised to the second power. Okay, now when we have double exponents, we multiply those double exponents. So I'm going to have 1 over 2 squared, which is 4, and then e to those double exponents. When I multiply them, I'm going to get negative 10x power. And then we know we have a property that tells us to get rid of those negative exponents. So we'll raise that base e to the numerator and make the exponent positive 10x. So our final answer is e to the positive 10x power over 4. Okay, here we're going to graph equations involving that natural base e. These equations are of the form y equals a b to the x power. So these are exponential equations. This first one I know is exponential growth because that exponent is positive x. But our second equation that we'll be graphing, I recognize as exponential decay because the exponent is negative, negative 0.4 times the quantity x plus 1. Okay, in this first e uh, equation, in order to graph it, let's make a table of values and let's let x equal negative 1, 0, and 1 to find the important part of this curve. When we let x equal negative 1, we have e to the negative 1 power. That's the same as 1 over e to the positive 1 power. If I let x equal 0, e to the 0 power is 1 because anything to the 0 power is 1. And if I let x equal 1, e to the first power is just e. Now remember, e is approximately 2.7, so I can approximate it on the y-axis. So when I graph that first ordered pair, negative 1, 1 over e, that's about 1 -third because e is 2.7. Okay, and then 0, 1 is my y-intercept, and 1, e. So this curve follows the x-axis again. It's exponential growth. It takes its sharp turn, and then it increases rapidly after that. The x-axis is the asymptote that this curve follows. The domain is all reals. And the range, the y values that we can expect are greater than 0 because that curve will never touch that asymptote, the x-axis. Okay, in our second uh, problem example here, we're going to make a table of values. And I'm going to let x equal negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1 to get the important part of the curve. I'm also going to move my asymptote down two units because there's a shift down when 2 is subtracted from that base raised to a power. Okay, now when I let x equal negative 2, I have negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. So when I raise e to the negative 0.4 times negative 1 power, minus 2, I'm getting approximately negative 0.5. OK, 
Okay, and then when I let x equal negative one, I have one that's zero. Zero times negative point four is zero. So I have e to the zero power, which is one, and one minus two is negative one. When I let x equal zero, I have zero plus one, that's one. One times negative point four is negative point four. So I have e to the negative point four power minus two, and I'm getting approximately negative one point three. Okay, and now letting x equal one, one plus one is two, to negative point four is negative point eight, and when I raise e to that power and subtract two, I'm getting approximately negative one point six. So now I'll graph those ordered pairs, negative two, negative point five, negative one, negative one, zero, negative one point three, and one, negative 1.6. So you can see that we're falling, this is exponential decay, we're falling towards that asymptote and taking a turn and then following the asymptote y equals negative two to the right. Domain is all real numbers. and the range are y values greater than negative two. Okay, now on this page we're going to use our continuously compounded interest formula. And this is why uh, E is referred to as the banker's constant, because it's found in our continuous compounded interest uh, formula. When interest is figured on interest and deposited uh, money, that principal P, uh, always continuously we use this formula, A equals P times E raised to the RT power. Okay, so in this problem, you deposit $3,000 in an account that pays 3.5% annual interest compounding continuously. What is the balance after three years? So all we have to do to get that balance A is put 3,000 in for our principal or deposit times E raised to the RT power. Now R is that uh, annual interest um, rate and as a decimal, so 0 0.035 would equal 3.5 percent and t is time in years, so t is 3. So the amount in the bank after three years on this um, deposit, if I run this through my calculator I'm getting 3,332 point one three. So that's the amount of money, $3,000, uh, $3,332.13 is the amount in the bank after three years, or the amount in this account. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 2 through 10 even on pages 493 to 495 of your textbook.